It didn't hit me until I was 15 that I was going to die someday. Watching a movie on the couch, the screen showing a man being forcibly pushed off the side of a building by the butt of a shotgun. If you know what movie I'm talking about, please let me know. But I then imagined myself as that man, that someday I will fall off that building. I was terrified sitting in my living room. To be fair, I'm really bad at watching movies because I'm too busy figuring out the plot. Because I like to look at movies, and I suppose life, focused on two sides of the spectrum. This life spectrum, either to be the best of the best, or a complete joke. I love movies where you can't predict the plot, the motives, the symbolism, the humor, and the beauty that comes about a moving picture that in the end moves parts of me. And then there's the other side of the spectrum, which is equally important and unpredictable. Horrible movies, specifically with Nick Cage, but movies that play only at 1 p.m. and 1 a.m. on Wednesdays kind of movies, where you're just there for the story and a good time. That's how I've decided to live my life, on this spectrum with eyes wide as the ocean, because when I look at this grand spectrum of either greatness, determination, focus, love, humor, growth to the other side of lightheartedness, risk, timeliness, and in the end, more joy. And when I think of that, I think of a line, more specifically a short line, because life is so short. Life is a dash. Because we don't get to pick either end. I don't pick my birthday, even though if I could, I don't think I would change it because I love being a Leo. And you don't get to pick your less heartening death day. Suppose I don't want to pick that one and I definitely don't think I'd want to know either. We live in the in-between. Someday when I do fall off that building, I imagine my headstone. There's my name, Jacqueline Marston, my dates, and what I was. A daughter, a writer, a leader, maybe a wife and a mother if I'm so lucky, a follower of Jesus, a comedian, a YouTuber, and so on. Everyone will see what I was, what I was to them, how I could be categorized onto a stone and planted back into the earth in which the stars and I are made the same. But the most important thing that on that headstone is the smallest, most insignificant part, the dash. That dash is who I was. That dash is not how the world viewed me, but how I viewed the world. And the further I travel along my dash, it evolves, and in turn, has changed me. Have you ever noticed that the ocean waves also live on this ever-changing line? Always pushing forward and pulling back in every way imaginable. We have never seen the same ocean twice. I can go to a beach one day and return to the same spot on the same hour the next day and it will be vastly different. The particles of the water are continually being rearranged within the body it is within and the greater cycle it's a part of. The water begins being pushed and pulled by a mass that sits hundreds of thousands of miles above. And that same sky brings the particles up and floats them around the world and returns them back to fall into random places of lakes and creeks and rivers and bays in a never-ending cycle of change. We are also in this perpetual cycle of change. We grow up, grow out, grow back into different people in every season of our life. Meeting new people, writing new stories, eating new foods, traveling to new places, we visit the salty, aired place and we see a brand new ocean every time. And that ocean sees a brand new us as well. The ocean is the best representation of change and deserves to be loved with every wave of change it brings. We must strive to do everything we can with our dash. As much as the world is changing around us in every way imaginable, we must strive never to become stagnant. We must never choose to decide when we are done with changing. Change is the only constant thing, and we have to know that that's how this part of the universe was designed. It's our duty to try and keep up, to keep up with this life spectrum so that we must keep our heads down, get to work, not to get lost in the clouds that everything is perfect, but with determination and focus, we can leave our footprint on the stardust that covers everything we know. And if all the spectrum, keep our eyes up and enjoy what has been left to us. The world offers us humor and beauty and the power of knowledge. 
We need to be grateful for the lightheartedness that is intertwined with that gift. While traveling from Prague to Paris through the winding waterways of Germany, I learned that your dash is your responsibility. If you want to live an interesting life, it's going to be a fight to get it. It's going to take hard work of looking down, having a plan, finding people who want to fight for the same quality of dash as I do. But I also want to live a joyous life, one with inside jokes that paint a beautiful stained glass window of mistakes, with burnt food and relationship bridges, with setbacks and belly laughs. By taking the long way home, even though home is sitting in the passenger seat, I want to stand by the ocean only after I have climbed through the mountain tops and weathered through the valleys that life has guided me through. I want to have a good story to tell the ocean. Maybe it'll be good enough to make a movie out of it.